Hey, it's Shannon from iHeartRadio Canada, joined by Fifi Dobson. Thank you so much for taking the time. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? How are you doing? I'm good. Good to see you again. I feel like it's like seeing an old friend that you haven't seen for a little bit. And I feel like your fans feel the exact same way. So how are you feeling about everything? I feel amazing. About to release a new single. And um, I'm really excited to to finally get this song out of the vaults. You know, I wrote it. Um, we wrote it in like 2012 so it's finally being released which is very exciting yeah f-ing in love i love the title it's strong it's good um how does Thank it feel you. having a song that is 10 years old but then going to be new for so many people it feels new to me again because i hadn't listened to it for a long time and when we decided to to use the song it was like it was like it was I hadn't heard it, you know, so it felt definitely brand new and it felt special again and exciting again. And I I felt like it was right to release it and get it out finally. Yeah. Did you have to tweak it and stuff or was it, are you releasing it as is? Released as is. There were a couple of things that I wanted to change sonically, but mostly it was just mix and master and put it out. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Speaking of time passing and you've been around for so long, your, your debut album's almost 20 years old. How does that feel? Crazy. Right. Crazy. Yeah. It's like, it, it feels removed, like not like just like yesterday, but it feels like yesterday at the same time. So, um, 20 years though, seems wild. Yeah. Definitely. And congrats on the new album that's coming out. How's that whole creation process been going? It's been going great. You know, I got to work with a lot of great people, great writers, great producers. Um, And it's been a really great process just because, you know, during the last few years, it's been such, uh, the world's been so upside down here and there. So um, in a lot of ways. And so it was my creative outlet, you know, I needed it. It It's very therapeutic. And I was going through a transitional period of like emotions. So I really needed to express myself and there was music like it always is. So um, this album is um, very raw, as honest as I can be. And my heart is definitely on my sleeve. Nice. What kind of transitional period were you going through that influenced it? I was going through uh, a crazy time in my relationship and um, not knowing if it was going to go left or right. And, um, it really shook up my world. So I I had to write about it. Yeah. That's what I've always loved so much about your music is that it's like, you can take so much like anger and negative emotions and you can turn it into such beautiful art, which is so great. Do you, do you bring back some of that angst and that anger in the album? Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. (laughs) Definitely. I mean, it's just a part of me it's just a part of who I am I guess yeah, we still have that that's awesome does taking a longer break does that add extra pressure at all well you know I you know I, I did I ha- they say I haven't released an album for like 12 years but in between those times I was still releasing music and writing and um made other albums that I decided to put in the vault which I have this vault I just put everything in <laughs> um and uh I've been doing uh, a lot of stuff in between releasing music. So it's just, it's just time. Yeah. It's just time to finally put it out there and let everybody know what I've been up to. Yeah, definitely. I like the idea of a vault. It's kind of like Taylor Swift with hers where like down the line, we can get like Fifi's version of songs or re-recordings of old songs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot in there. (laughs) Do you ever have any self-doubt? in what you do and create. Oh yeah, of course. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a little nervous with this first single, you know, um, it's just the way it is. And a lot of times that's why I don't put things out, which is kind of a problem is that I'm unfortunately and fortunately a perfectionist and, uh, I'll sit in the studio for days and try to sing the same vocal and, producers like it sounds the same as you say last time like it sounds great like let's just move on so um everyone I work with is they're all very patient with me which I'm very thankful yeah that's great yeah definitely pros and cons I can imagine with perfectionists or perfectionists Mm. 
Yeah. How did it feel mm-hmm. having Drake post about you on his story recently? Oh, it was really sweet. You know, it was, my friend told me about it and I checked it out and I was like, oh, that's so sweet of him. Um, but I, you know, I've known him for a, a second um, early on in um, his career. And uh, I'm just so proud of him. You know, it's amazing. Yeah. Totally. I, so I always love that he shows off that Toronto love and the love for other artists and things like that. I also oh, yeah. posted it with no context either. Just like, <laughs> yeah, it was random. <laughs> yeah. I loved it though. It was so great. Um, how do you feel about the popularity of so much like pop punk and pop rock coming back? About time. That's how I feel. <laughs> yeah. It's about time. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's great. You know, it's great to hear where music's going and where it is right now. And I'm excited, you know, for the, the near future. Yeah, definitely. I think it's, it's a good time to be releasing music too. That's so sweet. Hell um, yeah. When I was reading about you online, something that I found like almost shocking when doing research is that um, you've talked about being like inaccurately assumed to be an R&B artist in the beginning of your career based purely on mm-hmm. your race. Do you remember what that time was like or what your thought process was going or like what you were thinking during that time when that happened? Yeah, I was really young because it was just when I was developing and trying to figure out my sound and what I wanted to do. And so I was about 17, 16, 17. And um, I was working with um, a company in Canada, a record label in Canada. And um, the way they described me to other producers so that producers would kind of like know what kind of track to make me or whatever was Brandy Spears, which, you know, I love Brandy and I love Britney Spears, but I definitely... I'm not, I'm not the, those ladies. And, um, and I felt like it was a little unfair when I was younger, of course, because, you know, it was like, I haven't even figured out who I am yet. And like, I'm already being coined, you know, Brandy Spears. And I think, you know, clearly Brandy, cause I'm a black woman. And then, um, Brittany, because I had a, I have a pop voice or, or whatever they thought, you know, um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of how it started, honestly. Like when I started to feel like, hmm, am I being judged based on my skin instead of like what I want to do? And that always is kind of, kind of scary. And I'm sure, you know, it happens a lot. Actually, I know it happens a lot, but um, I am who I am and, and I'm unapologetic about it. And, and I've never really like when I got in the industry, I never thought to myself, I'm going to be this specific person and I'm going to do this. And I'm going to, I just was being myself. I was just being a teenager, you know, um, go from Scarborough, black girl from Scarborough, curly ponytail and just rocking out, you know, I, and just being honest about my home life and, and my, and my heartbreak and um, my growing pains. That was all it was to me and, and doing music. Cause that's my heart and being heard. Yeah. And it seems like a lot of the conversations around that time were them just trying to like figure out what box to put you in or like how to categorize you. Is that something that you felt like was ongoing throughout your career? Or is that even something that you might think about or feel that people treat you now? It happens a lot when I first started, for sure. Um, It happens. Yeah, it's it's way different now, I think, in a lot of ways. Um, But yes, in the beginning of my career, it was there were a lot of questions like, why is this girl doing this genre? And, and my team, my team's so good that my management team, that they definitely protected me from a lot of it. And I'm thankful for it because I could focus more on the music and not on like shit that really shouldn't have even been in my, um, in my atmosphere, in my life, you know? Right. Yeah, definitely. I feel like that's something that still the music industry tries to do is like put people in a specific genre, even though I feel like we're at a point where people can just be in whatever genre they want to be. Like the conversations when Lil Nas X first came out, for example. Right. I mean, genre is such a blurred thing at this point, but naturally we compare things. That's, that is true to some degree. Naturally we compare anything really. Like if you want your friend to hear uh, a new artist, you say, oh, she's kind of like this meets this, you know, there is some sort of comparison that will happen here and there to kind of like describe what you want to talk about. Um, But there's a fine line too, of how far that goes. um, I think. Yeah, no, definitely. As a, as a black woman, what change do you hope to see still 
either in the music industry or just society in general? Just, I mean, I still think that there is some genre uh, issues with um, skin color, with being black. I do still think that exists a hundred percent. It's unfortunate, you know, like Tina Bell, uh, this woman, Tina Bell, who is no longer um, with us. And she was the godmother of grunge. She started grunge and she is a black woman from Seattle and nobody talks about it. And we think grunge started with, you know, Nirvana, who I love too. I love Nirvana and all that, but no one talks about Tina Bell. And I think that's very important. I think what we can do is, and, and as a, as human beings and with our friends and whatnot is just to educate each other and really like go back in time and, and um, just, yeah. Uh, the history of music is very deep. Yeah. I love that. That's so great. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time. You were the very first CD I ever owned. So it's a surreal moment. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's amazing. I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Actually, my mom sold my car like a year ago and she forgot to take my CD case out when she sold uh-huh. it. And I still am upset about it. I was like, my Fifi CD, it's in there. <laughs> oh no. So now you need a new one. <laughs> now I need a new one. Well, this makes up for it. So that's fine. Well, maybe on the, um, is it 20 years? Maybe we'll do a vinyl and then you'll have a vinyl of it. Perfect. Can't wait. Awesome. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much.